Hello and welcome back to Beyond the Frontier. This is episode three. If you missed episodes one and two, definitely want to go check those out as they kind of lead up to what we're doing today in the mission that we have been given by K KSC, uh, or I guess not by KSC, but here at KSC. So first we're going to go to Mission Control and we're going to look at the mission that we're going to be taking on today, which is Moon or Bust. We need to establish an orbit around the moon with an ABAPS less than 2,400 kilometers and a perhaps greater than 60 kilometers. So just a nice orbit, nothing too difficult, but we're going to want to do a couple things first, which includes going to research and development and checking out what we want to grab with our 181 science. Now we've got a lot of different options, moon landing, we've got struts, monodrive, monopellant drive, power management, that probably we're probably gonna end up doing that for sure uh we've got small projects basic docking we've got basic trusses and light aviation as well so a lot of different options here to choose from and really with what we're doing we're going to be sending a probe so i'm going to get to power management and long-range probes as well because i want those uh static antennas and high gain antennas for sure and we could do things like research miniaturization or basic docking or monopedal driving, and but really that's not necessary for the mission we're going to be taking on today. Instead, I'm going to look at moon landing, and even though we're not required to land on the moon, there's something in this tech uh, unlock that I really want, and that is the larger Methalox tank. So I'm going to go ahead and select the moon landing, and then we'll jump into the VAB and get building. Now with this probe or satellite that I'm going to send to the moon, there's a couple of things that I want to make sure I have. Uh, a nice small upper stage that I can use to help uh, put it into orbit, make orbital adjustments, things like that. And I also want a high gain antenna. And also because why not, I'm going to throw on some extra antennas because one, it looks kind of cool. But also uh, maybe there's some possibilities in the future of relaying and things like that so kind of future proofing this a little bit and i'm going to use a decoupler because as we saw in the last episode with poor bill uh, separators tend to have a uh, negative effect on staging and yeah so we're going to use a decouplers instead throughout this entire build and i did name this the explorer one i know that in real life there is actually a explorer spacecraft uh, but I really couldn't think of a better name for it considering what I was going to do. Now, first, second, and third iterations, I um, had some differences of opinion on what I should do and ended up moving things around to try to facilitate a better launch, uh, including adding in some solid rocket boosters because I figured with solid rocket boosters, I could get a nice uh, thrust to weight ratio, but also could uh, help allow allow me to use the liquid fuel propellant later. So with that, I begin my first attempt at launching the Explorer 1. And I forgot to check my staging. So I reverted back to the VAB and uh, fixed the issues with my staging. Make sure to check your staging. So this is Explorer 1.1, 1 .1, uh, or 1-2, one, or one I should say. And you can see I painted the top a little bit and the bottom and fixed my staging. And going for take two on launching the Explorer. And if you notice, there's something not quite right uh, with the angles of the rocket because I forgot with the rotation that I selected in the VAB, it off put the nav ball. So what I was used to doing was hitting the right keys and that actually pitched it towards me. So I quickly started having problems with stability and to try to fix this issue, I thought, hey, let's increase my center stage power from 52% to 100% because that gets me more gimbal, right? Well, as you can see, I had a small problem uh, 
and was having trouble fixing it. So I just hit prograde and hoped my SES could recover, and it indeed it did. I think that's partially because I got into the upper atmosphere at the time, but it worked. Now you notice that my probe has a high temperature warning, and this is something that I deal with over the next little bit with it being a high temperature, and that's mainly because I don't have any type of fairing. Now that's going to be fixed later on, I hope, and getting some science and things like that, but I've got to get this into orbit at the very least, so I set my pair apps and apple apps, and at the same time, just finicking with this, adjusting it, trying to get this thing just right. Uh, and once I get a nice orbit planned, I set my SES to maneuver, extend my antennas, and wait for the burn. After a slight delay in the burn, the orbital insertion burn has begun hoping to get Explorer 1 into a nice orbit around Kerbin. Now there's a couple things I want you to pay attention to during this burn. Mainly, if you look in the lower left-hand corner, you'll see the pair apps number uh, slowly, it's decreasing slash increasing in altitude. And I was following the maneuver node that I had set, but if you recall, I had a slight delay in the start. And that actually ends up costing me a good bit of delta V here. As you can see, I stopped the burn prematurely. And as I fast forward, I do not notice that my altitude is beginning to decrease quickly, dropping all the way into upper Kerbin atmosphere and you'll see that I don't even recognize it when I go into the map. I am completely clueless that my spacecraft is on the, a very dangerous position where it could explode during a re-entry. And right as I pass 70 kilometers up I am now officially no longer in space and I am now being sucked down to the surface of Kerbin and I still don't realize it. It's not until I get a warning from my spacecraft that there's a problem that I finally realize that I am in a very dangerous situation. As I fast forward, I notice we're on the dark side of the planet. It should be decreasing in temperature, but it's increasing. That's when I realized my mistake. Smashing the full throttle button, praying that I could get out of Kerbin's atmosphere. My high gain antenna is destroyed. And I just say, prograde, let's get out of here. But then that was the wrong decision as well, realizing that I was just fighting the all I was doing was fighting the atmosphere. I needed to go up because I was already in the atmosphere. I couldn't take the heat. So I increased my angle of attack 
just trying to gain altitude. And I'm just hoping and praying that my spacecraft is able to survive. But I'm able to do it. I'm able to get out of Kerbin's atmosphere and into a somewhat stable orbit. And the mission continues, I'll bet, with a lot less Delta V as option. But over the course of the next several minutes, I create maneuver nodes attempting to get a good uh, orbital insertion to the moon. And one of my biggest issues was my inclination was so off. And that was because of my initial launch profile. If you remember right in the beginning, I had problems controlling the spacecraft because I had rotated at 90 degrees. And that caused all kinds of problems. So I decided, you know what, let's go and fix the inclination issue uh, to begin with before I try to get any type of interception. Now I do this and I power through several different burns, uh, maneuvers trying to get into a nice orbital inclination to set up a burn to the moon. Finally, after a couple of burns and inclination changes, I was able to get a maneuver node set up for a Mooner intercept. And using this maneuver node, I was able to fire my second stage rocket engine and get into a nice uh, interception with the moon. Due to the issue with the earlier uh, falling back into Kerbin's atmosphere. I ended up having to use what I traditionally planned on being my lunar insertion stage rather than transfer stage uh, as a transfer stage. So that, again, reduced the amount of Delta V I had available. I'm still well within comfortable margins for getting into a orbit that is necessary at uh, the moon. So I wasn't too worried, but it's just one of those things that it would have been nice to have a little bit extra delta v to not have to worry about maybe you wanted to change the inclination or something for a future mission without having to send another spacecraft So now that I'm on the way to the moon, I time warp to the lunar encounter and going to use that as an opportunity to set up my next maneuver node uh, to get a orbit of the moon. One thing I wanted to say was KSP2, even after several hours of playing now, still kind of takes my breath away with the visuals in some instances. Uh, granted, other times I'm like, that looks cartoonish and... Uh, I wish that looked better or whatever, but compared to KSP1, KSP2 really does add a lot to the game regarding visuals. I mean, it makes sense after, what, over a decade of KSP1 that we should have better graphics now than, you know, what we had then. But sometimes you'll see with other games that that may or may not be the case. Uh, so glad that the developers are working on that. So getting my... Uh, lunar orbit setup. Uh, you got to play with the maneuver node a little bit. Again, I wish the developers would set up an option where you could select a pair apps or apple apps and create a maneuver node exactly on that position. That would really help with orbits. Um, so if you're listening to the devs, could, could we get that as an option? That'd be fantastic. Or maybe it's an option now and I'm just clueless. But anyway, so with the orbit not quite right, I ended up having to play around with a little bit to get it working and set properly, but eventually I get it nice and even around the moon inside of the envelope of the mission, which if you recall was below 2,400 kilometers and above 60 kilometers. So really I could have a completely weird uh, orbit and it'd be completely fine as long as it was in those, but being the perfectionist that I am, 
I worked to try to get a pretty circular orbit around the moon. And again, this is in preparation for future missions. Practice makes perfect. Why not work on that now when I'm not risking Jebediah or Valentine or Tim or any of the other carbals available to you in KSP2. So with that maneuver node set up, I set the SAS to maneuver and then I'm going to time warp to the point. So now that I'm close to the maneuver node, uh, the visuals again kind of caught my breath a little bit with the entire the sun reflecting off the lunar surface and also the spacecraft a little bit. And I was like, this is this is like screenshot worthy. This is thumbnail worthy, but if you know the thumbnail already, you'll already know that's not what I chose. And that's because later you'll see that there is something a little bit more breathtaking around the bend, so to speak. So with the maneuver node here, we can execute that maneuver node 100%. And you can see we've already completed the mission now. We have gotten the science. Hooray, hooray for the Kerbonauts and the scientists and engineers at the Kerbal Space Center. We have successfully completed the mission yet again. But we're not done yet because I want you to see what it looks like when we're coming over the moon and see Kerbin rising over the horizon. Reminds you of the, I think it was Apollo 10 or Apollo 9, I think it was Apollo 10 that had the uh, video showing them coming over the crest of the moon and showing the earth in the background and they read Genesis and uh, very fitting, very fitting. It's just such a beautiful reminder. And yeah, so that was the thumbnail that you see. I thought it was just a little bit better than the sun rising over, or I should say, uh, Kerbal, or Kerb, I guess, it's Ker is it Kerbal? Kerbal, yeah, with the O, right? Yeah. Anyway, so with that being done, head back to the KSC and a mission control and moon or bust mission complete, 150 science completed. We have officially started our next step in our space program. And with that being done, that is going to wrap up this episode. In the next episode, we are going to tackle several more missions. And these missions are, well, they're pretty challenging. We've got to do a perfect circle, which is specifically having a, a really close apogee and perigee around Kerbin. We also have to plant a flag on the moon and we have to land on the surface of the moon one small step so with all that being said we appreciate you uh, taking time to watch this video don't forget to like subscribe comment down below if you like this content you want me to do some type of challenge or something like that let me know down below i hope you've been enjoying this and i can't wait to see you all next time out on the launch pad in beyond the frontier episode number four